So the keystone of the theorized Dornish master plan is a relationship between the Martell brothers, Dorn and Oberon, and Kyburn. If this cannot be established, then really everything else falls apart. So let's give this our best shot. So who is Kyburn? Well, we know Kyburn was a maester of the Citadel for a time before losing his chain and being forced into exile for opening the bodies of living people. Now perhaps opening the bodies of the living was something super sinister, or perhaps it was simply surgery. It's hard to say. Anyway, we know that at the Citadel, Kyburn knew Marwyn and seems to have respected him. Kyburn also claims that Marwyn was the only one who liked him. Kyburn and Marwyn are certainly both unorthodox in their academic pursuits and share the belief that the Maesters are largely a bunch of followers. The Grey Sheep, they call them. The term Grey Sheep, Kyburn picked up from Marwyn. It seems likely that Kyburn is being honest when he says that he and Marwyn had mutual admiration. There is no reason for Kyburn to lie about this relationship with Marwyn, as neither Jamie nor Cersei know who Marwyn is. So we know Kyburn was exiled, and we know that after being exiled, Kyburn ran with a foreign sellsword company called the Brave Companions as a healer. The sellsword company was eventually hired by the Lannisters, which allowed Kyburn to make his return Seven Kingdom side. Now from Kyburn's studies, both foreign and domestic, he seems to know a lot about poisons and poison treatment, which isn't too surprising since all maesters are trained in poisons. But what is striking is that he appears to have more knowledge of poisons than Grand Maester Pycelle, so it seems his knowledge is exceptional. Now for some reason, Kyburn also has a very strong interest in the Faith of the Seven. When Jaime first meets Kyburn, Jaime makes a simple rhetorical joke after being asked by Kyburn, will you take some wine at least? Jaime replies, does the High Septon ever pray? Now this is clearly the Westerosi version of, is the Pope Catholic? It means, of course, or obviously, and does not need a reply. And yet Kyburn says, of that I'm not certain. It's a rather striking statement. Kyburn infuses a rather extreme religious belief into a conversation that didn't require one. It's as if someone made the joke, is the Pope Catholic, and someone replied, of that I'm not certain. And this isn't an isolated incident. Once Kyburn begins working for Cersei, he begins to fill Cersei's head with religious extremism as well. He tells her that followers of the Red God are demon worshippers. Keep in mind, the religion of the Red God is an everyday religion in Westeros, with temples and Old Town and Sunspear. Declaring a religion that of demon worship is a rather extreme position. And on top of these extreme beliefs, Kyburn actually tells us that he has contacts within the Faith of the Seven. In fact, a quarter of his intel reports to the Crown relate to the Faith. And finally, rumors claim that Kyburn practices black magic. So, we know that Kyburn was at the Citadel, was a comrade of Marwyn, was exiled, ran with a foreign sellsword company, learned a great deal about poisons, has a great interest in the Faith of the Seven, and is rumored to practice black magic. As it happens, much of Kyburn's backstory mirrors that of Oberyn Martell. Oberyn was also at the Citadel for a time, and earned six links of a maester's chain. And while we don't know if Oberyn knew Marwyn, we know his daughter Sorella is working closely with him. Oberyn too was exiled, and founded a foreign sellsword company. And Oberyn learned a great deal about poisons, certainly more than Grand Maester Pycelle. And we know that Oberyn had a child with a Septa, who for some reason trained their daughter with an extensive knowledge of the faith. And finally, Oberyn also is rumored to practice black magic. Now that's a pretty extensive list of similarities. Two different individuals studied at the Citadel and had connections with Marwyn, then went into exile and studied poison and black magic, and were part of foreign sellsword companies and had a weird interest in the Faith of the Seven. At minimum, one has to admit that these two men could talk for hours about their shared interests. But perhaps this isn't enough to convince you that Kyburn works for the Martells. So let's keep going. So we know that Oberyn and Doran very much want justice for their sister Elia and her children, Aegon and Rhaenys. Rhaenys was killed by Amory Lorch. Elia and Aegon were killed by the Mountain. And Oberyn believes the whole thing was planned by Tywin. And so vengeance for these murders really revolves around three men, Lorch, the Mountain, and Tywin. As it happens, there is one character and only one character who is present around the deaths of all three of these men, Kyburn. Kyburn was there with the Brave Companions at Harrenhal when Amory Lorch was thrown into a bear pit and subsequently eaten by a bear. And it was Kyburn who was given the mountain after he was wounded, and Kyburn was supposedly there when he died. Additionally, it was Kyburn who handled the dead body of Tywin after he died. No other character can claim such a close connection to the deaths of these three men, or at least, these three men's corpses. So now we find that Kyburn not only shares a life very similar to Oberyn, but was also lurking near the deaths of the three men that Oberyn and Doran most wanted vengeance against. Still, perhaps it's all a coincidence. So let's keep going. 
Let's go over Kyburn's job as Master of Whisperers. When Kyburn starts, he claims he has connections in Gulltown, Old Town, the Free Cities, and Dorne. Now, considering he was at the Citadel and in a foreign sellsword company, Old Town and the Free Cities would not be surprising. But why connections in Dorne? There were Dornishmen in the Brave Companions, but none of them should be in Dorne. Timian was killed at Crackclaw Point, and the remaining Brave Companions headed to Old Town. Now, weirdly, although Kyburn claims he has contacts in Old Town and Gulltown, we never hear any news from these cities, and it's uncertain if Kyburn has any contacts in Essos either, as news from abroad can be found at the docks. In the end, the only contacts we are sure that Kyburn actually has in the four places he lists, Gulltown, Old Town, the Free Cities, and Dorne, are in Dorne. Now let's go through the actual intelligence that Kyburn provides. As Master of Whisperers, Kyburn provides 27 whispers, depending how you count. Whisper number one, Rugen the Jailer, has disappeared. His source? the chief underjailer, Renifer Longwaters. Whisper number two, the Great Sept's bells will stop ringing at sunset. His source? Well, Cersei asks about this, but he dodges the question. Kyburn has mystery contacts in the Faith. Whisper three, Septon Lucian is a contender for High Septon and had dinner with the most devout. His source? Again, his mystery contacts in the Faith seem probable. Whisper number four, people think the crown was involved in the Red Wedding. His source? Wine sinks and pot shops. Whisper number five, the sparrows are angry with the phrase about the Red Wedding. His source? Likely his mystery contacts in the faith. Whisper number six, the Golden Company is heading to Volantis. His source? The docks. Whisper number seven, the Archon of Tyrosh has offered terms to Lice to end their trade war. His source? Unknown, but probably the docks. Whisper number eight, there's a slave revolt in Marine, and there's dragons. His source? The docks. Whisper number nine, Damon Sand has been arrested. His source? Mystery contacts in Dorne. Whisper number 10. Silva Santicar has married Lord Estermont. His source? Mystery contacts in Dorne. Whisper 11. Damon and Silva were both close to Ariana. His source? Mystery contacts in Dorne. Whisper number 12. There is an anti-crown puppet show in King's Landing. His source? Unknown, perhaps just walking around. Whisper 13. Lady Tanda has been thrown from her horse. His source? Unknown, a mystery contact at Stokeworth? Whisper 14, Braun has been gathering sellswords. His source? Unknown, perhaps a contact at Stokeworth. Whisper 15, Kyburn reports to Cersei on the number of sparrows in the city. His source? His mystery contacts in the faith. Whisper 16, Septon Lucian was almost elected and then the High Sparrow took over. His source? Mystery contacts in the faith. Whisper 17, Urin Greyjoy is the Ironborn's new king. Source? Unknown, and holy crap, this is actually a really, really impressive piece of information. We will get back to this. Whisper 18, 100 knights came forth for the warrior's son. Source, mystery contacts in the faith. Whisper 19, Lancel has renounced his lands and joined the faith. His source, mystery contacts in the faith. Whisper number 20, Lord Giles has died. His source, unknown but likely Pycelle who was taking care of him. Whisper 21, spying on Marjorie that revealed nothing. His source, Bribed servants. Whisper 22, Tommen is secure, lonely, and asks for Cersei. His source, unknown, but likely Pycelle or Harry Swift. Whisper 23, Marjorie will be tried like Cersei. His source, probably his contacts in the faith. Whisper 24, the blue bard is being tortured by the faith, but keeps repeating the same story. His source, his mystery contacts in the faith. Now, Kyburn's 25th whisper is a big spiel on the fate of various actors in King's Landing. Osfried Kettleblack has been dismissed from the Gold Cloaks, Pycelle and Swift rule the kingdom, Kevin is coming from King's Landing, Tarly from Maidenpool, the Tyrells from Storm's End. It's a lot of information, but it all comes from Pycelle and Swift. Whisper 26, the Golden Company has landed. Source? Unknown, but probably the docks. And finally, Whisper 27 is on the character of Lady Nim. Source? Unknown, but probably the mystery contacts in Dorne. Phew, we made it through. Now, as we can see, Kyburn's whispers are very King's Landing area focused. Seven he gets from walking around and talking to people in the Red Keep. Two are from Stokeworth, and nine are from the Faith. Now, Kyburn has nine whispers about events outside of King's Landing. He has four about Essos, four about Dorne, and one incredible piece of information about the Iron Isles. However, of his four whispers about Essos, at least two came from the docks, which means probably all four did. So if Kyburn got his Essos news from the docks, it seems Kyburn's intel network really only involves the King's Landing area and Dorne. And there's the Iron Isles intel, which we will get to.
Now one might say, well of course Kyburn has contacts in Dorne. Cersei tells us that Varys' informants are now working for him. Except weirdly we have no news from any of the other Six Kingdoms. Keep in mind we know Varys had spies in the Vale and at Dragonstone, and yet Kyburn reports no news from there. Cersei has to rely on Littlefinger and the Lord's Declarant's letters for news from the Vale, and she relies on Arrain Waters for news from Dragonstone. We also know that Varys has spies in Old Town, at Casterly Rock, and at Highgarden but we get complete radio silence on those places. So contrary to Cersei's belief, it seems Varys' informants did not come forward, which would explain why Kyburn's ability as Master of Whisperers is pretty pathetic. Again, outside of King's Landing and Dorne, he has nothing. But what about that news on the Iron Isles? Well, that is interesting, because no regular informant should be able to provide that information. You see, in Cersei VI, A Feast for Crows, the Red Keep is woken up with news of the Ironborn's surprise attack on the Shield Islands. Cersei and Pycelle don't seem to know about the rise of Euron, so the Maester Network seems to be in the dark. In fact, it's the Tyrells that inform Old Town of the Ironborn. And yet it's Kyburn that tells everyone that the attack is from Euron. Now let's remember that Euron and the Ironborn left the Iron Isles to attack the Shield Islands soon after the King's Moot. The Reach is just now getting reports on Ironborn attacks and are clueless. So how does Kyburn know anything about Euron? If a maester sent a raven from the Iron Isles, then Pycelle and Cersei should know this information too. And of course, had a raven been sent, the Reach probably would have been better prepared. The only explanation on how Euron's identity got from Old Wick to Kyburn without a raven is some sort of telepathic information passing. The most likely telepathic method would be a glass candle, something that Kyburn's comrade Marwyn happens to have. So, on top of Kyburn having a life very similar to Oberyn, and on top of Kyburn weirdly being around the three Dornish targets of revenge, we find that Kyburn only has proven contacts in the King's Landing area, with Marwyn, and in Dorne. Still not convinced that Kyburn is aligned with the Dornish. Fine, there's one more thing that links the Dornish with Kyburn. Let's talk about the skull of Sir Gregor Clegane. In A Dance with Dragons, the Watcher chapter opens with the Dornish about to open a box from Cersei to look upon the head of the mountain. Now quite significantly, 100 scented candles are out to deal with the smell of the head. It is absolutely clear that everyone thinks a rotting head is arriving in Dorne. And there's no reason they shouldn't be expecting a rotting head. A head's identity is a darn important thing. After all, the mountain's head is paralleled with all of the dwarf heads that keep coming to Cersei. In fact, Cersei receives a dwarf head in a box of ivory and gold around the same time that Doran receives the mountain's head, or perhaps a giant's head, in a box of ebony and silver. And keep in mind, with Cersei's dwarf head, being able to identify it is incredibly important to her. However, when the Dornish open the box, lo and behold, everyone is surprised. It's a skull. The Sand Snakes are baffled. Why would anyone send a skull? As it turns out, it was Kyburn who weirdly took it upon himself to clean the head with beetles. Cersei certainly didn't order it. Now Kyburn does reveal to Cersei that he cleaned the skull, but he does only to Cersei, and he does so with loud bells ringing around them, so it's unlikely anyone overheard them. After that, the skull is put in a box and shipped to Dorne. So there's only two people in the world that should know that a skull is heading to Dorne. Cersei and Kyburn. And yet, there is this banquet in Dorne for Balon Swan, which is held right after the surprise reveal of the skull. The banquet serves egg and lemon soup, peppers stuffed with cheese, lamprey pie, capons, whisker fish, snake stew, sherbet, and for dessert, spun sugar skulls. Spun sugar skulls. Balon becomes quite uncomfortable, and Ariana tells him that it was a joke from the cook. But here's the thing. How did the cook know to prepare skulls? Wasn't everyone expecting a rotting head? Now here's a description of the skulls. For the sweet, each guest was served a skull of spun sugar. When the crust was broken, they found sweet custard inside and bits of plum and cherry. Now spun sugar is a real art. It must have taken many long hours, if not days, to shape the spun sugar into three-dimensional hollow skulls for all the guests' dessert. It's simply not believable that the cook would be able to hear about the skull and then prepare the dessert in such a short period of time, all the while still managing the rest of the banquet's food. And even if the cook were able to perform such an incredible feat, it wouldn't make much sense to do so. Had the cook planned to serve a batch of spun sugar rotting head desserts? Then, after the reveal, the cook was forced to trash them and went into a mad panic to prepare spun sugar skull desserts instead? That's a boatload of work for not that great of a joke. 
No, somehow Doran's cook knew to shape skulls as a joke well before Balon Swan's arrival. And yet there were supposedly only two people in the world that knew that a skull was coming to Dorn instead of a rotting head, Cersei and Kyburn. And Cersei certainly didn't tell the Dornish. So in the end, we see that Kyburn shares a life similar to Oberyn, one of the Citadel, Marwyn, Exile, Poison, Sellswords, the Faith of the Seven, and Black Magic. And we see that Kyburn was around the three killers of Elia and her children, Amory Lorch, the Mountain, and Tywin, when they died. And we see that Kyburn has proven contacts in Dorne, but oddly nowhere else outside of the King's Landing area. And we see that Dorne is getting information that only Kyburn and Cersei should know, namely that a skull is heading to Dorne instead of a rotting head. And if Kyburn is aligned with a major faction of Westeros, House Martell is one of the few remaining possibilities after others are eliminated. Kyburn recommends killing Freys, which would severely hurt that house and House Lannister, its ally. He was for the execution of Davos, showing that he's not a Stannis supporter. He clearly does not have Varys' network of spies at his disposal, and his manipulation of Cersei led to the torture and removal of Littlefinger's cronies, the Kettleblacks. He recommended the murder of Jon Snow and discounted the Night's Watch, showing that he's not likely a friend of any northern house. No, the evidence is quite strong that Kyburn is working for House Martell. And once we accept this, other things start to fall into place. Oberyn's unnamed sellsword company would then likely be the Brave Companions. And suddenly Kyburn's obsession with the Kingsguard begins to match and complement Doran's actions with the Kingsguard. And we'll talk about Dorne and the Kingsguard in part four.